One of the most frequent comments I get from people is, how do you do so much scary, hard, consistently over time? When you look at me on paper, you see someone who has moved across the world twice, who has changed career focus from HR to design. And I also have this thing where I'm trying a ton of new stuff all the time, from climbing when I first moved to Sweden, now sailing, and everything in between. To different people, these things might seem impossible and even extreme. And to me, they did at some point too. And that is the trick. It is possible for me, and it is possible for you. This video is my view, the two mental models that I've used to achieve 95% of what I've set my mind to in the past few years. This has allowed me to do these consistently hard things, often extreme things, things that take energy and exertion to begin. The first thing that I wanna highlight is the times that I've done objectively, the most hard thing is the time that I've opened myself up to failure. You can't really deadlift double your body weight unless you are willing to fail and fail dozens of times, even hundreds of times, before you reach the pinnacle, the thing that you're after. In fact, you want to fail because only with failure do you get that muscle breakdown and the ability to rebuild that then allows you to lift heavier and heavier weights. So this concept that I want to highlight for you is we need to intentionally fail. It is an extremely powerful mechanism. And there's two parts to intentional failure that I want to point out. The first part is what I think of as Tim Ferriss's approach to fear setting. It's being aware of the fears that you have. And he has a whole exercise about how to unpack the different fears that we have. So he unpacks a fear and then he goes and does the fear. He goes and does the thing that he's afraid of. The example that has always stuck with me is he has always been afraid of being poor, living in poverty. So he went and he lived like a homeless person for however long, realized that he could handle it. That was not the worst thing that could happen to him. And suddenly different things opened up. Some business investments that might've seemed risky at the time because the underlying fear was that they wouldn't work out and he would be homeless was no longer there. He could move much more easily through all of these different decisions that he had to make in his life where the underpinning was a fear that was holding him back. So that fear setting approach is one mechanism and it's really powerful for moving through resistance to fear. And then a slightly different way of interacting with our fears, what I call intentional fear engagement, is going out and doing the exact opposite of the thing that you wanna be doing. The exact opposite of that big achievement or goal that you are working towards and all the tiny habits that build into that thing. So for me, I had recently lost motivation with YouTube. And it wasn't because I didn't want it because and I didn't want to prioritize it, but I felt resistance to initiating the steps that I knew I needed to do in order to be carry the kick-ass YouTuber. To be blunt, I was half-heartedly trying and putting in minimal effort into my videos. That's not what I want from this channel and what I'm after here. I went out with my friends, got trashed, was celebrating a friend, and had quite a fun night. But we were standing in this club dancing, knowing that the time was ticking down until it was closing. And I was looking around me at all the other people having a good time, drinking, kind of trash, just like me. And I kind of knew that this is not how I want to get the kicks in my life. This is not what I want from my life. This is not where I'm going. I don't want to do this on a reoccurring basis. It's not going to get me what I want. And because I had overindulged, I had done everything that I shouldn't be doing. I was staying out late. I was drinking. I was seeking those quick dopamine hits. The next day, I was hyper productive until I wasn't, until I crashed because of the low sleep and the hangover. But in the morning, hyper productive. And I could kind of reset myself by reaffirming what I did not want from my life. So sometimes we can reaffirm what we want from our lives by failing. And if we can do it intentionally, then it can be a huge trigger for focus. Which brings me to focus the second part of this video. To do very hard things consistently over time, so multiple things, I create what I call the moment to jump. It's a pause of self-made momentum shift. So I think about the time when I was first cliff jumping with my dad and I was standing on the edge of this thing. No one in our group had done it yet. And I always like being a person to do something first. You know, I feel brave, I feel bold, and it gives me a sense of energy but of course, looking down at this dark water, not knowing if someone else had done it, that's a scary feeling, a feeling I had intense resistance towards. But I knew I was going to do it, you know, from before I had already decided that this is the thing that I want to do. Because I've already decided that I don't want to do the opposite of this thing, I want to do this hard, scary thing. Then I know it's just about one moment to another. 
I just need a pause moment in the middle there where I get a mental clarity that allows me to do the thing. So when I'm going about doing something hard, very often something hard and new that I haven't done before, I intentionally create these momentum shifts, these trigger moments that give me mental clarity that then allow me to do the hard thing. So how do I do this? Well, it could be that I look at the clock and I say, in 30 seconds, I'm going to do the thing. It could be that I'm walking down a forest path and I see a tree and I decide at that tree, I'm going to let go of the rejection I just experienced asking a guy out. And then I walk towards the tree and once I pass the tree, I let it go. And the trick here is that you start quite small with these trigger moments, build them up to bigger and bigger things over time. Every single time you need to do the thing after the trigger moment. You need to build up that self-esteem and have confidence with yourself that you will be able to do the thing after that moment you've set for yourself. In that way, you can start to engage in bigger and scarier things over time. Get yourself to do hard shit consistently. This could be anything. I'm about to click send on an application for a job that I really want, that I'm nervous about, that I don't think I'm gonna get. Or I'm standing in front of the bar about to deadlift my one rep max after months and months of preparation. Or very often, I'm about to walk into a room of senior executives who have been doing the thing I'm about to facilitate a workshop on for years. And I know I need to be the challenging voice in that environment. I need to challenge some people to open up their perspective. I get the same resistance. I'm about to do something hard that's scary. Look down at my smartwatch. I put a second timer on. And once that beep goes off, I walk into the room and I do the thing. So a small bonus, I know I said two, but I'm actually gonna give you a third one here, which is how do you then do one hard thing consistently? For this, we cannot rely on motivation. We know a lot of the other gurus have said, you can't rely on motivation, you need dedication, you need habits, blah, blah, blah. blah. What you actually need to do is embed that hard, scary thing into your identity. That is now just who you are. It's the thing that you do. I've spoken before about identity setting and you can find that video here, but that is essentially crafting ourselves an identity around something and integrating it into how we live our lives. For me, I'm able to maintain a good baseline of hard things that other people might perceive of as overwhelming because I have multiple identities that have integrated into me, into how I live my life over time. So in the scenario with the executives, yes, I need to create a momentum shift, a trigger for me to walk into that room because I still have some social anxiety about people who are in senior leadership positions, but I'm not investing energy in challenging the status quo. For me, that is a natural part of who I am. Uh, I need to push in other places. This is how we get ourselves to live the lives that we want, not living in fear of not achieving something or resenting that we didn't do the thing that we always wanted to do because it was hard and scary. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. That's how I know that you're enjoying the content I'm creating. You will notice in the next coming weeks that I'm not going to post a video consistently every single week. I'm going to post a video from now on when I believe I have value to add and when the thing I'm creating is of the quality and standard that I want to produce. I want to put these integrated fulfilling lives that I hope you want for yourself because I certainly want it for myself. I will see you in the next one.